Hey, I'm Simon from ThinSuite and in this video, we will discuss how the client-first structure will help you to improve your productivity and webflow, so stay tuned. In client-first, we follow a certain structure for our projects. And using the structure, you normally won't have any problems with how your site looks on different desktop sizes, like as we can see here. Even on the smallest desktop sizes, it's always looking pretty good and adjusting. And then when it comes to tablet or other breakpoints, it will also work perfectly fine. And now I'll discuss some core structural elements which we have here, some core structural classes. Um, so inside of the section, we have the page padding. And this page padding has left and right padding. In this case, it's 2.5 rem. You can, you can change the value for your project if the design is different. And so this padding will just make sure that there will always be this amount of space between the edge of the website and the content. Then next, we will have the container large. And the container large has a max width set. In this case, it's 80 rem. So that, did, that means that the content can get, can't get any larger than 80 rem. We could change this to 60 rem. And now it would um, have a limit of 60 rem. So this makes sure for the larger desktop sizes that it will always work. And then we have the padding vertical, which just creates the vertical space between sections. Like here, we also have padding vertical. We use this structure in nearly every single section that we have. So for example, if I just uh, cop if I just wanted to create a new section here, I would normally just copy this section. And then I could just delete the parts I don't need. So for example, I would delete the component and then I would rename the section and I would already have, have a setup for a perfect se section that has the best structure you could wish for. Let's move on to the next structural element, which is the page wrapper. And what does the page wrapper do? So basically the page wrapper contains the whole page, which means that we can just say, with Control C or Command C on Mac, we can just copy it. And then if we create a new page, I'll just name it Tutorial Create. We can just copy the page. And why can't we just copy the body somewhere else? Because this is not possible. You can't copy a body somewhere else. But the page wrapper actually enables us to do this. And it has already saved me a little bit of time. So for example, um, when you copy, if you want to copy a page to a new project or another project, um, this can save a lot of time. But also, if you just create a new page, as I just did, but you want to have it set up. So for example, the nav bar already added the global styles, the footer or the main wrapper. This can also come in really handy for you and save you a lot of time. Another important thing to mention when it comes to the client first structure is probably the section naming. You probably all know uh, some builds, some Webflow builds, where every section is just named section. So they are using one class for every section. And we're obviously not doing that in client first. So every section has a custom name. And this is actually a huge time saver. And I would definitely recommend you to do this because one thing in client first that is really important for us is navigator accessibility. So when you look at the navigator, you should always know what is going on. And not only that, you should also be able to navigate through the page, which actually the word navigator says, right? So here, uh, if, we, if we wanted to just switch to the stats section, we could just click this here and we would immediately navigate through our page so much faster than if we had to scroll through the whole page like this. So we can just click the other section and we'll get there immediately. So this is also um, a great, great practice for you to do in Webflow, which can save you a lot of time. In the previous video, we talked about nesting elements in client first, and I would like to further iterate on this topic. Because nesting is a way for us to keep our build global while still not stacking classes. And no worries, I'll explain these terms in a second. So 
what is keeping our build global? Keeping our build global means that we are using uh, the same classes on multiple instances are on our site and our project to not have to create uh, more classes and also to make it easier for you to change values from classes in a second. So that's uh, keeping our build global. And then we don't want to stack classes, which is the other thing why we're using nesting in client first. So um, I'll give you an example. Stacking classes would be something like uh, eliminating the padding vertical element here by just putting the padding vertical classes on the container, for example. So I'll just type in pad vert here in the class selector which is kind of a shorter version to get to padding vertical. So I'll use the down arrow key and then the enter key. And then again, I'll use the control enter key on Windows, which is the command enter key on Mac to access the class selector again. And then I'll set it to pad huge, which is a shorter version for padding huge here. And I'm going to select it. So now we it comes to the same, but we don't have a separate layer here. And while this may seem uh, good in some situations, it's not the best thing you could do if you're not an expert. And that's actually a thing. It's not client friendly or collaborator friendly if we have it like this, because if we just open this build and we uh, see how uh -huh, we have the section home stats, well, there is no padding vertical anymore here in the navigator. So we kind of have to search uh, through the things to uh, through different elements and classes to find out where the vertical padding is. So now that we found it here, um, we have these stacked classes. And that actually opens up another potential problem, which is changing one of these classes. So let's say we want to change the container size here. Um, well, what we wouldn't do uh, in, the in the first place is to just change the value here, because this would create a combo class for these here. But we can also not just type in uh, something else here, like container medium, because if we type in container medium here, this won't work because we actually have another class in our project that's called container medium. So what we would need to do actually is to remove both of these classes just to change it to container medium here, container medium. And then we would need to remember which classes were uh, added before. And then we would need to add them again here. So pad vert and pad huge. So this is really not easy to change um, classes when you're stacking classes like this. So there are even more arguments why um, we are not stacking classes in client first, but you probably already understand that it would be maybe better to just keep it um, nested inside of each other because there are just a lot of dif different benefits that are great for your productivity and for working with collaborators. To sum this up, we have a well-organized structure in client first that makes it easier for everyone to work with. Try it out and see how it can improve your productivity in Webflow by cloning one of the resources we created for you. The official clonable, which has already been cloned more than a thousand times, one of our nice client first templates or one of our wireframe kits. You can clone whatever you want. You just have to go to finsuite.com slash client dash first and all of these resources are completely free for you to clone. Also make sure to subscribe to the Finsuite YouTube channel for more YouTube videos and live streams. See you soon and have a nice day.